Right, today I'm going to detail how to fit a low coolant level warning buzzer onto a car that hasn't got such a warning, such as this Freelander one. Uh, equally well applies to cars like that MG over there, which I'll do later. Um, but to do that, I'm going to use a level switch like this thing here, which I got from Amazon.co.uk. Uh, it comes with all these gaskets and uh, nuts and fittings. I think it can be either fitted from the outside or the inside. To make it a little bit better, I'm going to fit it from the inside. So obviously this bit floats, and the idea with this is, I think we need to put it that way up, so that when the water level is the right level, the switch is open, and when the water level drops, it closes, completes the circuit, and turns on a buzzer. And here we've got a cheap little buzzer from the same source, Amazon. And we just need to wire that to um, the battery via the ignition switch, so that it comes on when the ignition is on. So the cost of those parts, uh, the level switch, which is a higher temperature level switch than most of them, is £12.50, and the buzzer is £2.89, so for around 15 quid, it's well worth fitting a safety warning to protect you running out of coolant water. Uh, this engine, which is all good, uh, just uses a very, very slight bit of coolant over a month or two probably, uh, with the occasional top-up. So it would be very useful to have a warning so you don't have to keep checking it every few weeks or so. And it's essential that of course you don't run out of water because then it ruins the engine. I think it's got to go in round about this position here I think. So that would be that sort of angle. When there's enough water it's floating up like that. Switch is open, water level drops, goes to that, activates the alarm. Uh, hopefully somewhere around the bottom will be good enough. What we don't want is the alarm falsely going off all the time when you're driving along. And I think from that reason, it might be better to have it coming in from the side, such that braking and accelerating doesn't make it flop up and down. So first we'll connect up the wiring, and we need to get a wire through into the uh, passenger compartment where the beep is going to be, and where our ignition supply is going to be taken off from the fuse box. So we just need one wire piece of wire here. I've taped it onto this uh, straightened out coat hanger and the reason for this is I'm going to get the wire to go through the bulkhead in the same position that this, you can just about see it, this bit of cable which is the bonnet release cable, quite a stiff piece of cable, goes down through a gap or a hole in the bulkhead. And what I'm going to do is use this coat hanger to push the rubber away like so, and then that pushes all the way through into the passenger compartment, which you'll see now. <clears throat> Here we have a piece of coat hanger coming out. I'm going to pull that down and take off our cable. Then open the glove box, open the fuse box, feed the wire through to the side here. So next we've got to work out where to get our 12 volts that only comes on with the ignition. Have a look at the fuse box, quite a lot of fuses here. We want a quite a low value fuse because the beeper we're going to put on takes a very small amount of current. Uh, so I'm going to pick this ABS fuse, F7. It's only a five amp fuse. Taking the fuse out this position here. And what you then need is a multimeter to work out which side of the fuse is live and which is the actual fused side. So uh, these multimeters you can buy them for about five pounds. Uh, might possibly put a link in the description if you haven't already bought yourself one, very cheap. Um, now we need to measure between ground. Now there's a convenient piece of metal over the back there. So press one probe against that piece of metal over here. See that in the corner? Yep. And then I can do this one handed. Then, with the other end of the probe pressed on the piece of metal where the fuse plugs into, measure one side. See, the bottom side is measuring 12 volts with the ignition on, of course. The other side, just to check, reads zero volts. So, we want to actually connect to the top side because then the 12 volt supply will be coming through the fuse before it gets to our new beeper that we're going to put on. 
Oh, and by the way, just make sure that it reads zero volts with the ignition off, which confirms that that 12 volt supply is coming via the ignition switch system. And to connect to that 12 volt supply, uh, I actually connect the beeper straight into it. Uh, the other end of the beeper is going to go via the level switch and then down to ground. And to connect to it, so we want to get it into our top connector, I'm just going to poke the wire with the red positive side of the beeper into the piece of metal where the fuse goes at the top. And then, then I'm going to plug the fuse in on top of it to clamp it in place. Right, that's the wire in place. Give it a little tug, make sure it's firm. And just wrapped it around this cable. The beeper in that position is probably loud enough to be well heard by the driver. So the negative side, we're then going to connect to our cable. So we'll just come to the bulkhead to our level switch. So let's wrap these two pieces of uh, cable together. So I twist these together lots, and then I like to wrap it around itself like. So, there's no way that's going to come apart. Uh, you could solder it as well if you want a really good connection. That'll do, and then we'll wrap some insulation tape around that. There we go. Wrap up that piece of cable so it doesn't get pulled back too much. Because next, we have to pull out the coat hanger. Like so. And then we have our piece of wire, which is here. That we connect to the switch. So strip the insulation off this. Wire strippers are good. Well, if you haven't got those, a knife, cut all around the periphery of the insulation, bend it over to break the insulation off, and hopefully pull back. Maybe just cut a little bit more insulation. There we go. Give that a twist. Get our switch. Doesn't matter which way around this goes. Twist those together. So, wrap it around itself. This end of the switch needs to go to an earth point. So, I believe this should be a good earth connection. Very convenient. Just need to undo that nut. Squash the wire underneath the nut and do it back up again. And at the same time, I'm going to disconnect the tank. So, you seem to have some sort of nut here. Hold it in place, not sure this is original, but whatever nut you've got here, undo it. That then pulls up. And release the tank from some of these clips to give you a bit more room to work with. And maybe over here. So it's a 15mm nut or so I think. Back up with the cable underneath it and turn the ignition on and now you can hear the beeper working when it's in that down position. To avoid getting any swarf in the cooling system when we drill the hole I'm going to disconnect the tank and then we can uh, take the fluid out. So to do that get some pliers, release this clip on the top Be quite careful taking this top hose off. Quite a delicate piece of uh, plastic connecting to the top of the tank. There we go, that's that released. And the bottom one is similar. So if we turn the tank around, we won't lose any fluid. And similarly on the bottom one, this particular one. Let's squeeze that hose retainer. Get it over onto the rest of the hose, like so, and then we can lever off the hose. Interesting, actually, it's a little bit wet underneath, so maybe that was where some of our fluid had been slowly leaking out. We'll put some sealant on that when we reassemble it. There we go, that's that off. So no fluid has been lost so far and empty that out so here's the tank off and i believe 
around here is the position we want to fit it. This way up. Should be about right. So we've disconnected our switch again so we can fit it from the inside of the tank. Which allows for a smaller hole and better seal. So it says to use a 16.5 mil drill bit. Uh, I've got a 5 eighths which is close, it's about 15 and a half. Might need to try and open up a little bit more after that. So this is actually a wood drill bit. And we'll just open up a little bit more by moving it around at an angle. See if our switch fits. Just try it from the outside first, just to see if it fits or not. And of course, we've got to fit from the inside. Yep, that should be fine. So next is to clean up the hole. You want the surfaces to be nice and flat to get a good seal with the washer. Be careful. You don't cut your thumb at this stage. And then just work that scalpel blade around to remove the swarf. Do it on the inside as well. Oh, that's a little bit more difficult. So if you feel with your finger how flat it is, it's quite important obviously to get a good seal. You don't want it leaking. Seems to be, I think, good enough. Just feel with your finger whether you think it's flat enough. Okay. Then bash out any bits of swarf and then we'll wash it out with water as well. So, in the instructions, this is uh, how they recommend putting on the gaskets to seal it. I think I'm actually going to try and do a double seal just to make sure we don't get any leaks. So we'll have this little gasket on the inside. So we'll put that on first. And then feed the wires through the hole. Like so pull the switch in. Make sure it's orientated correctly, which is that way around. Like so. And so next, as I say, what I'm going to do is make a uh, much better seal rather than just rely on one washer. I'm going to actually use this other second washer that's normally used for um, fitting the device from the outside in and I'm going to cut off this collar and the scalpel or with some side cutters and you can, this then becomes just a normal rubber washer I like the belt and braces approach to it. And then we'll use the other thing that comes with this kit, which is quite a stiff, hard plastic washer, which will apply even pressure onto that rubber gasket. And then we can put on our nut. So I happen to have some of this Loctite 572 which is actually a thread sealant, uh, as I say, and I think would probably do. Even uh, actually, no, I wouldn't recommend silicon sealant because that tends to make it a bit too slippery. Uh, but maybe some sort of uh, gasket sealing compound. All right, that'll do. Then we'll turn that nut up, and then. I'll tighten the nut, yeah. fill it up with water, check for leaks. So far, so good. The switch is floating nicely in there. So we'll let some water out and see 
at what position that's going to come down. So mid range to min and max, that's still floating nicely. We want it to trigger probably quite a lot below minimum to avoid any false alarms. So that is just below minimum. Uh, that probably would trigger at that point. Okay, that's it all uh, reassembled, fitted back again, no leaks. Uh, one thing I did forget is to put on that lock, uh, lock washer under the nut. But since I've put loads of sealant on uh, this particular installation, then that's not too critical because the sealant will probably hold it in position. The other problem, it does give false alarms when the car is moving around. Uh, because this float is at an angle because of the shape of the bottle, although it's floating right up in the air, as you rock the car from side to side, you see the float waggles around over the place. Uh, it would be better if the float was coming in horizontal, and it would always stay in the upright position, I believe. Uh, but that's difficult on this shaped bottle and getting the uh, water sensing level right. So what I'm going to have to do is uh, instead of taking that power directly from a 12 volt fuse, instead there are three alternatives that I present here. One would be to take it from one of those warning lights on the dash. So take the dash apart, tap into the power supply that drives one of those bulbs. Then it would only give you a level warning beep when you first turn on the ignition. Or another and much simpler alternative and with the addition of one little component is to add a little capacitor into the circuit probably only cost a few pence this is 470 microfarad capacitor at 25 volts uh, the negative side as dictated by the little dashes here connects to your float level switch which goes down the ground uh, the other side goes into your beeper like that so it's in series with the circuit uh, this is just temporarily fitted. I should solder these connections up. Um, so now what happens is it'll only beep once if the water level is too low when the ignition is first turned on. So to show that, just turn the ignition on and push the water level float sensor low. You should hopefully hear it. I just push that low and I'll move the microphone into the car so we can hear it. So you heard that sound die away and now on subsequent activations of the switch you don't get any more beeping which means as you're driving along and this is wiggling around it's not constantly beeping at you which is what we want but after you turn off the ignition let's just do that If you really have a water level problem, this is low, that will then discharge the capacitor because the charge on the capacitor is then going back through the circuit uh, of the car that that fuse is connected to. And then the next time you turn the ignition on and the water level is low, you should still hear a beep. Hopefully you heard that. Bit quiet, so back in the car again. The alarm now only comes on when the water level is low and it only comes on for a few seconds when you first turn on the car. Now it's possible that if the car's been left off overnight, the capacitor may well discharge in that time, in which case uh, it might give a beep just the once when you're going around a corner uh, the water level is swishing around, but you'll know that if it doesn't beep, when you first turn on the ignition then the coolant level is okay. Instead of a beeper you could have a little LED lamp or even a normal light bulb lit I suppose somewhere if you want something less obtrusive. Uh, also one final mention if you like your gadgets you could have a little speaking warning so you could get one of these BBC micro bits with a simple little loudspeaker. This is a little mini computer. This uh, costs 15 pounds uh, the speaker a few quid um, so you just connect a, a phone charger cable a micro USB cable 
to cigarette lighter thing and then the, basically this is then your power to your speaking computer uh, that's the positive side that's the negative uh, this is obviously a cigarette lighter adapter that provides USB and you can program it and show you the sound that it makes it's a bit of a coarse type of speaking uh, it might take you a while to work out what it's saying so here goes and it keeps on saying that if you can't tell what it is it's warning coolant water level is low and it says that 10 times and it goes to sleep for 10 minutes and then it will repeat it again uh, so if you want to make one of those actually they're quite easy um, everything is downloadable in terms of the software there's a bit of software called uh, Mew Editor. Um, send you the link if anyone is interested. Uh, this is just a very simple transistor and one resistor to boost the sound a little bit. Uh, if you want the code, I can send that to anyone who is interested as well. So basically, you just copy and paste a piece of textual code into the Mew Editor, press the button, uh, and it downloads the code onto this micro bit via. A USB cable that plugs into your computer. So very little computing knowledge needed. You don't need to learn how to program, no electronics or anything like that, apart from maybe a bit of soldering if you want a louder sound. If you don't want a louder sound, you can just buy the speaker between, uh, which one is it, pin, zero and ground. Um, still loud enough to hear what's going on. Um, so that's an alternative. Could have a speaking sound instead. Uh, the advantage of that, perhaps, is that it uh, doesn't keep going all the time. It only says it ten times and then stops. Probably would be possible to program it to filter out the uh, situation where the switch is going off and on as the water is slopping around. Uh, I haven't done that yet, but that would be a possibility. So, all sorts of different options there for you. Yet another alternative is to knock up this little circuit with a few components, five components. Uh, the job of this circuit is to basically electrically filter out the multiple switches of the level switch as the water is sloshing around in the tank. So now this has to be closed for quite a few seconds before the beeper will go off. And it does this by um, electrically slowing down the signal by this resistor and this capacitor. This Xenia diode stops the beeper coming on too quickly. It has to get up to over about an 8 volt difference between this point and this point. Uh, because this is a 5.6 volt diode, which means it doesn't start conducting until you've got that voltage across it. And the beeper doesn't start working until it's about 3 volts. Uh, that just stops it coming on too soon slows it down. Um, don't need to worry about the other ones too much but uh, they help the circuit work a bit better. So now turn the ignition on and you'll see that if we mimic the water sloshing around in the tank by just moving this switch backwards and forwards a few times there's no beeper sounding that goes off until we move the switch down for a few seconds. Let's see how many seconds. I'll move the camera into the car so we can hear it. And now I'm going to move the switch now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Just starting, so about eight seconds. And then the beeping sound gets louder and louder. So that circuit allows the warning system to be working all of the time which is quite useful uh, and guards against the tank emptying while you're driving along um, but it also filters out false signals as a result of the water sloshing around the tank and will only activate if the tank is emptied and the switch is activated for eight seconds or more and that's the simple little circuit uh, just wired up with a few flying wires and we'll just wrap some insulation tape around that to stop it shorting out from anything. And that seems to work quite nicely. 
Right, good luck with yours and thanks for watching. Bye.